Let me ask you something. <clears throat> Do you want to be happy? Do you want to be able to have a better way of thinking? Do you want to be able to really heal from all the hurt and pain from the narcissistic abuse that you had suffered with your mother and with your siblings if that's involved? As well as the enabling father, or he could be a narcissist too. How badly do you really want that? How badly do you really want to be happy? How badly do you want to save yourself from going insane? Ask yourself that. How many of you would like to call the shots in your life <clears throat> without seeking approval, wanting approval? How many of you want to find and discover who you really are? If the answer to all those questions is that you want those very badly, the only way to accomplish that is by going no contact and I know I've done a video a couple videos ago about the benefits of going no contact and as well as to go contact low contact no contact and for those of you that can really weather that storm and still stay in contact with your narcissistic mother and can still have a sane mind hey i'm not knocking you and i would say that this video won't be for you and i don't say it demeaningly but um this video is mainly for people who are stuck where they're at because of their narcissistic mother this is what this video is going to be for. And if once, if any of you have already established no contact, the hardest part is to remain that way. And you know what? And if for some reason you fall off the wagon and fall for your mother's ploy, I'm not going to sit here and look down upon you because you still have that hope that maybe one day she'll turn around or maybe that one day she'll see the light. And as soon as she, your guard is down, she's got you. No need to sit there and get on yourself. I'm not going to beat up on you. <clears throat> I'm not going to sit there and say, you idiot, you dumbass. You know better. No. Because as a loving person, if I was like a godmother or a stepmother to you, I'd say, that's okay. Pick yourself back up. Get back on that horse. And you stay on that horse. You get yourself back up. I'm not, I'm not sitting here going to beat you up or look down upon you. You just have that hope. And that's understandable. Your heart's in the right place, but I'm going to tell you. You keep falling off that horse, your heart's going to get stomped on. So, it's either you do it now or you do it never. No contact is no contact. No emails, no phone calls. No handwritten letters. I don't care if it's the holidays, birthdays, whatever. Because if you're going to use all that, you're just going to just be entangled right back into her web. You got to think about your, yourself. And if you have your own children, you got to think about them too. Would you want your children around your narcissistic mother or father?
or even siblings? Do you really want that? Do you really want that cycle of abuse to continue? And I'm sure your answer is no. So if you want to break that cycle, it can be done. You have to go no contact. And if your children see your narcissistic mother for what she is, that should convince you even enough to cut all ties with your narcissistic mother and anybody else that's involved. And even if it breaks down the people that she's associated with the family, you have to break them all off. <clears throat> For your own sanity. For your own peace of mind. And it's. it's. I'm not saying it's easy. Because it's sure. I guess with me. With all the pain that I suffered. And with me. Just smartening up and said okay. I knew. That it was a game. I guess with me. For myself it became easy. It became easy for me because I've been excluded out of family gatherings for 13 years and yes it hurt like hell but through therapy you know and I decided to go no con that's all made me stronger and I believe another thing that made things easy for going no contact for me, for myself, and everybody's situation is different. Is that I already have people that already love me and accept me for who I am. So it made me replace my narcissistic family a lot easier. But for those of you that's really been really attached to your narcissistic mother and all the pain, all the abuse. You know, at some point, yeah, I do understand. And I know it's not the easiest thing to do. But like I said, I can't compare myself to you. You can't compare yourself to me. But I can look at it through somebody else's eyes. And see why that would be hard. You know. I can, you know, I can understand why it would be. But there are some things to motivate you. And if I can help you be motivated. And I and just tell you things to just really. That will motivate you. Because we all want to be happy. We all want to be loved and accepted. We all want the abuse to stop. But the first part is you got to come to the reality. They're never going to change. I don't care what they say, what they claim. If it's been 12, 13 years or more and things haven't changed, don't you think at some point you would come to some type of grips in reality of saying, okay, it's been X amount of years and it's never changed. I mean, you can do all the praying in the world. And it's never changed. You know, you've done all the forgiving. and But you don't forget. You know, so at some point, you should wake up and say, hey, it's been 20 years. Same bullshit. <clears throat> nothing's going to change. And where I'm at, I don't like it. But only you can change that. Complaining about it is not going to change it. You have to get up and say enough is enough. You can either sit there and not do nothing about it and the abuse continues. Or you get up off your keister and say enough. No more. It's my turn to be happy. It's my turn to get my life back. And it can be done. And the best way. The very best way is no contact. Like I said in a couple of videos back, I don't care if you have to move on the other side of the earth. I don't care if you have to move on the other side of the country. The further the way, the better. Because you need to, get, and it's not running away. Um, I can give you a very, very 
prime example. Ollie Matthews, and I think if I remember right, I think he originally lived in Jersey with his narcissistic mother, and he moved all the way to Florida. And he's happy, and he's stronger. He's helping others with his videos. His videos has helped, even helped me. And the man's married. He's happy, and you know, and he did what he had to do to be happy. So, like I said. It can be done. And like with me, um, my narcissistic mother lives in the south end of town and my sisters live in different parts of the city. But, you know, I haven't heard of anything in that letter that one of my enabling narcissistic sisters sent me, the one with the Quasimodo and all that mess. I haven't heard any crap from her. And what's funny is that recently I looked through all my YouTube videos that I have done. And I've seen a lot of likes. And I've seen maybe one or two dislikes. So that kind of maybe tells me that the ones that don't like my videos might be the one. Maybe this somehow, some way, this came across and somehow my narcissistic sisters found out and maybe they're the ones that put a thumbs down. Well, you know, I don't care. I don't care who don't like my videos because the ones that don't are the ones that are narcissists themselves. You know? And I tell you, I don't care if I get more dislikes than I do likes on my videos because I'm speaking the truth and I'm speaking from experience. And that's supposed to be a discouragement, a discouragement for me to stop videos. Well, I won't stop making these videos. And any of my narcissistic sisters that come across these videos, you can dislike all you want. Because I'm not going to stop. The more you try to discourage me, the more I'm going to talk, the more I'm going to do. And I even told my therapist about that lately. And she basically said, do you really want everybody to like you? And I had to really think about that. And you know what? I don't want people to like me if it makes me compromise who I am. Because I'm going to be who I am and I'm the kind of person I speak my mind. I'm not afraid to speak the truth. And nobody in my narcissistic family is going to shut me up. I don't care. Because I will continue to expose these pieces of shit narcissistic people in my family. And that's all what they are. They are a piece of shit. And that's the way you got to look at your narcissistic parents or siblings. It's pieces of shit. They're nobody. They're powerless. You know? And staying no contact is the best daggone way to get your life back. Because let me tell you something, when I, another thing that really motivated me to go no contact with my narcissistic mother once and for all is that she always pulled that miss saying she misses me. You always want to know when I want to come down there and every time me and my fiance come down there that I miss you bullshit was nothing but a ploy so she could sit there and continue to extract information for what me and Paul are doing so she could sit there and keep my narcissistic sisters uh, fed full of information. So, you know, I said no more. And my daughters have even told me that my mom, that she's overheard my mom talk about me on the phone to all of my sisters. So right there, I said no more. How I live my life from here on is none of their damn business. How I obtain money is going to be none of their business because now I finished school and I'm on my way to finding a very good job. Um, you know, I know as soon as I pass my coding test with flying colors, I'm on my way. 
So, you know, being in no contact, I've been happier. I'm still struggling with some things, you know, but all the more I'm, I'm stronger. And, you know, like I said, I've, you know, gotten a grip on my anger a long time ago. I found closure, and that's one of the biggest accomplishments that I have achieved. And I'm very proud of that. And, you know, if I can do it, you can too. But just remember that go in contact, go in no contact with your narcissistic mother. It's more, it's not just a decision, but it's a process. And you're not going to get to a certain, don't sit there and set timelines. Take it one day at a time. That's the best approach to having no contact to be a success in your life. You've got to take it one day at a time, one step at a time. Put one foot in front of the other. That's what you do. You sit back, you take an inventory of your life, and you decide where your life should go. Get the help, get the therapy that you need, but like I said, and I've emphasized it in a couple of videos ago, be careful who you select and find out and make sure that that therapist is going to be right for you. Make sure that therapist specializes in narcissist system and there are certain screening questions that you can ask and you can just really read their body language and whether they really look straight you in the eye and you can tell. Just bite her demeanor, bite her attitude, and you can pick up on it right away. It's just like a job interview. Because you know what? You're important. And if you have to go through many appointments trying to find the right therapist, do what you have to do. Because finding the right therapist is key. And I know some people will sit there and they say, well, therapy don't work. Well, I could tell you one thing, but the reason why therapy didn't work is either one or two things. Either the therapist did give you the tools to work on and you refused to work on it, or the other reason why the therapy didn't work is because the therapist didn't know what the hell he or she was doing and don't understand narcissism. So you didn't do your work. You didn't do your, your homework. You didn't ask the right questions because you have to ask questions. You're the boss, and you got the, if you got the insurance or you're the one that's got the money to pay for it, you're the boss. Because without you, they can't get paid. So I'm also speaking also from a patient advocate, advocacy uh, angle. Because like I've mentioned before in a video that I am my own patient advocate. And I even have a few videos on my channel about patient advocacy. And it's like, hey, you got the insurance you or got the money? Then you have the control of who you want in your recovery. And once you find the right therapist, then you had to come in there that with that frame of mind, and this is what I did. I was like, okay, I'm seeing a therapist, and I present my problems, and that therapist is there to give me the tools that I need to recover and to find my life back, and to, to get my life back. That's all what a therapist is there for. And you cannot expect for a therapist to do the work for you. That therapist is there to give you the tools that you need to get where you want to be. And it's up to you. Even if you found the best therapist in the world, if you don't do the work, they don't expect to be where you want to be because you didn't use those tools. You have to do the work. And I, I can see and understand where no contact may not be the easiest of things. But at some point, you got to let those emotions go. I'm not telling you to stuff those emotions. Yeah, deal with those emotions, yes. But don't let your emotions control you either. I'm not saying not to have emotions, but you got to keep them in perspective. You know, sometimes your emotions can lie to you. 
So try to keep out as much emotion as you possibly can and think of things as realistic and say, hey, where do I want to be? You gotta think about your sanity. And that's very important. So I urge you to go no contact. Like I said, I know it's not gonna be easy. And there's if there's something that you really want in life, it's not always going to be easy. It's just like Okay, you decide to go to school and you want to be a nurse. Well, you got to do the work to get the degree to be a nurse. It's not going to be handed to you on a silver platter. It's not going to fall on your lap. You have to do the work. So anything worth having is worth doing the work. And I know that your happiness is worth having. I know that your mental well-being is worth having. And... Uh, I know that uh, taking control and calling a shot in your life is worth having. That's important. So I urge you to keep all those in mind. And if you've fallen off the no contact wagon, get, just get your keister back up and say, okay, no more, That's a, that was a trick. My mom and my siblings were bullshit. Okay, I'm going to stay on this horse. And I know anything, I just can't trust them anymore. And they won't be trusted. And that's what you got to do. So right now I'll wrap up this video for now. I've hoped, really hope, through this video that you really have made up your mind to go no contact. Because I tell you, I mean, yeah, it's hurtful to let go of, you know, even, even if there were some good memories involved. Believe me, completely understandable. So I've had that too with my with my narcissistic family. Yes, I know there's some good times, but you know what? You can't let those be the reason for you to keep hanging on. Because if it's been 10, 12 years, or even 4 or 5 years and things haven't changed, they never will. And you have to come to that reality. So until then, I thank you for watching. I thank you for subscribing. And as always, I wish you love, peace, and joy. God bless and take care. Bye for now.